our order of service Saturday, Sabbath worship, 10 a.m. Sunday, scripture studies, 10 a.m. Wednesday, midweek prayer, 5 p.m. Friday, welcoming Sabbath at sundown. You can worship with us at Yahweh's People Assembly, Dr. Solomon Ademola Street, Okyoshi Oshugoshu State. For more inquiries, you can call us on 080 63 510520 or 080 3837-6947. This program. We give you all the glory, Father. We bless you. We adore you. We magnify your name. We greet you, our family, all over the world and here in the sanctuary. We thank you for this few episode that we've been following us. We want to bring you some facts about the faith that we believe in, that we are following. A lot of things we have been reading in the scripture that to some it's like a fictional stories. Some people even went as far as to say that uh, all those things are not real, they don't happen, they never, yeah, they never happen. So that prompted me to say, okay, we should do a clip, a video clip that is available everywhere in the world. A group of people, they have done the research and they try to prove some of these scriptural facts. Is it very correct or is it not correct? Is it true or is it not true? And you will find out some of the truth. And once you find out those truth, you will be able to know that, well, this is a reality because we will give you visual aids of all those places, of all those things. Occasionally like that, we will be bringing you some features like that of the scriptural facts to enhance your faith and your belief in the scripture. The scripture says you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Showing you the truth for you to know the truth so you can be set free. Let us pray. Our Father and our King, we thank you, we bless you, we give you all the glory, we give you all the honor. We thank you for your children that are going to be watching us now, Father. Your scriptural fact that we want to share, show them, Father, eternal King of glory. Explain it into in their individual spirit. Even illuminate their mind and open up their mind. Let them be able to see the truth in your word. That they may be able to believe in the totality of your word. And that they may be able to know that nothing is impossible for you. Magnify yourself in the life of your people. Thank you, Father. In Yeshua's name, we are prayed. Shalom. I asked the local, the hotel owner was here with us that we know, and he says, I've never seen this before. You know, he said his hotel's in a different area, but you know, he was amazed at what he saw. So, uh, well, there's the evidence right there. It's yeah, solid. Right. And so a piece of it was broken off for us to look at. And you can see up close here, all the little rocks and the sand, they're melted together, infused wow. by the pillar of fire. And this goes on for some ways. This isn't just one little spot. And so Ron Wyatt went, went scuba diving out there and various things have been found in the water. You can see human femur bone that is coral encrusted, which would be something you would expect. And on the left here, we see a normal one on the right you see the coral encrusted femur from one of the soldiers. On the top left, you see a human rib cage stuck in the coral. Now, what about people who say, oh, this is just, this is table coral? It's, it's just... It, it's not, because it has metal in it. And so here's a horse's mm. hoof. It's shriveled up when they took it out of the water. Mm -hmm. It's shriveled up. So, again, we have horse parts, human parts. What are we seeing here? What is this coral? Uh... And so this is coral standing on an axle, and it has a raised center hub with spokes going outwards. Here's another round chariot with a raised center hub, and then spokes going out, and it's got a round shape to it. Again, it's covered in coral. Do some people say that these are just modern shipwrecks? Some people have said that, but again, this agrees totally with the design of the chariot wheels. Mm. With a raised center hub and using metal detectors, there is metal in the center there are spokes going out. This is a four-spoke wheel with three spokes left. Four-spoke wheels, six-spoke wheels, and eight-spoke wheels are found here. Hmm. Of course, using the metal detector, like he's demonstrating here, 
all of the hubs here contain metal, and that is the design of the Egyptian chariot wheel with the metal center hub. Now here is a gold-plated wheel. There were 600 choice chariots used in the Exodus, we're told, so you would expect to find 1,200 uh, chariot wheels here with gold, and this one is special. It's gold-plated, and two or three of these were found by Mr. Wyatt. Hmm. Now we see a more shallow area where the Red Sea crossing took place. It's shallower here compared to the north and compared to the south. It's still deep. It has to be a deep area. It's 2,800 feet deep, but that gives you a 4% grade, which is manageable. Over in Saudi Arabia, you see the remains of the pillar uh, that was found there on the Saudi Arabian side. It was cut down by the Saudi authorities. It had Hebrew writing on it. We don't know where it is. But there in the Saudi waters, Vivica Pontin went scuba diving and she found this beautiful chariot wheel in the Saudi Arabian waters. So you have chariot parts on the Egyptian side, chariot parts on the Saudi Arabian side. So but it's not the crossing site. It couldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the critics would say. But uh, you know, the evidence is here. It's real. So we rented a boat and went out with a Rove, a remote operated vehicle, uh, had a 100 foot tether. And so we were going to do some little inspecting ourselves. So this is a submarine camera? Yes, for okay. a few hours. And we didn't have days and weeks to do this, but we had a few hours. We rented a nice boat here to take off. We headed down toward the south end of the beach. We're headed toward that area. And you can see the waters uh, extending over to Saudi Arabia in the distance. And so were you stopped by the Saudi authorities like uh, Leonard Mueller was? They, sometimes they do, yeah. If they suspect <laughs> you, they'll come over and see what you're up to. Mm. But uh, so now we're in the approximate area and we're gonna, we're gonna throw the drone into the water. So are you closest to what, which land is that we're there? We're close to Egypt close here, to Egypt. Saudi, right. uh, excuse me, Sinai okay. Peninsula. So we're getting it ready for another launching here. So here's the camera, it's got three propellers, um, and it's giving us a live feed back up into the boat. And uh, so that day we were able to see something, I looked around, but we couldn't confirm that it was a chariot wheel. So here we're launching it, and then here's an instant replay on board the Rove. The Rove's videoing this, and so we're down in the water, so where you are is not that deep where you are right here. Right, Close it's, to the it's land. not that deep, yes. And so you can see some coral parts here. But again, coral doesn't grow on sand. That's there true. has to be it something to, to grow to something, on. Yes. Mm -hmm. So obviously there has to be something down there. Yes. But this area is very remote. I wouldn't imagine that it's you know, pieces from, human, uh, from modern humans because why would they be there? There's, there's nothing there. Yes. So some of these objects here may be from the... Uh, you know, the Pharaoh's army, we can't tell for sure. This is fascinating. So we have the, the video from the Red Sea Crossing. Thank you for showing us your, your trip down there. Uh, after the break, we are going to come back and uh, talk about Mount Sinai, what's on the other side of the Red Sea Crossing. So we look forward to that. For more than 20 years, Ron Wyatt spent his life and his life savings on researching and finding the real Mount Sinai, Sodom and Gomorrah, Noah's Ark, and the Ark of the Covenant. Discover the amazing truth of Ron White's discoveries in a special series from A Rude Awakening International, A.D. Archaeology Discovered. Special guest Kevin Fisher walks you through every discovery in detail, including his personal verification that the sites Ron White found are real. The, you can see the four major discoveries, the Noah's Ark, Red Sea Crossing, Mount Sinai, Sodom and Gomorrah, those are visible things. Right now, you can order this fascinating series on DVD and Blu-ray. You'll get all four episodes as seen on Shabbat Night Live. It's not for us. God has a timing for this. It's not for us to force the issue, you know, to try to bring it out. So, Israeli authority, they know it's there. Order AD, Archaeology Discovered. Order online or by phone. And welcome back. If you decided to support our ministry, thank you very much for doing so. You can donate anytime by going to rudeawakening.tv or 888-766-3610. Again, thank you very much. Now, we're with Kevin Fisher from Ark Discovery International, and we meant to get into uh, something before the break, and that was uh, Kadesh Barnea. We're going to talk a little bit about that and then get into Mount Sinai. But tell us about, tell us about uh, Kadesh Barnea. 
This is the second location where Moses struck the rock. Okay, make, hold on, hold made, on. Second, lo wait a minute. Yes. Second right. location. What's yes. that about? Well, the first location was in Mount Sinai. Okay. He was told to strike the rock, which he did. Area. Okay. We in see the it distance there. is the area we'll be taking a look at. But you can see it's rather flat out here. Mm -hmm. This would have been kind of the area where the children of Israel would have camped. Plenty of uh, level area here. And then uh, this is a site where the water erosion is. Uh, you can see someone standing here. Uh, to the right of this individual is the site we'll be taking a look at where there's the most water erosion. But this is the site where Moses struck the rock. Now, in the next slide here, we can see a large amount of erosion coming down the mountain. It's eroded away. Okay. This, this rock, I mean, these are large cutouts in the rock caused by a lot of water. This isn't a trickle of water, but uh, a real gully washer coming down here constantly, eroding away the rock into channels. There's actually large channels here as deep as six feet going down. And in the distance here in the left, uh, with the individuals next to the stone, that is a baffle rock stone, they call it, where it was approximately six feet deep there, the channel that was being cut out, and the children of Israel stuck this rock down in the channel to force the water out, to spread out the water, basically. Okay. Like a dam, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, here you can see the eroded areas. Oh, still these some are, pools there? Yeah, yeah, these are deep. Apparently there had been a light recent rain here in, in this particular case uh, when we were there. And again, you can see more of the eroded areas mm -hmm. of the rock, more evidence of a large amount of water creating these deep channels coming down and here we're looking down, down the side of the rock here, more of the deep channels. So is this recognized by anyone as being this site? It's not officially recognized. Again, hmm. this, is, this is one of the discoveries that's not recognized by the majority. And the next slide here, we see the deep channel, about six feet deep, where the baffle rock was hmm. placed in here, uh, strategically placed. It's a wedge-shaped rock, forced straight down in there. And then here's the back side of it. You can see again. Oh, that is a massive stone yes. when you see it from that angle. It's very large, and it's wedged vertically mm. in there, you know, like it was placed uh, by the human hand in some way or another. Yeah. So, uh, and just above this, we'll take a look to the right of this, but again, you can see the baffle rock, and then where the water would have run downhill, out into the encampment to mm to give refreshing water to the children of Israel. Now, have there been any uh, artifacts found out there, like some pottery well, and things? Well, or? Ron White did find some pottery, uh, grinding millstone mm. uh, out there. So artifacts have been found in this the encampment area. So regardless of what you want to believe, people did live there at yes, some point. Yes, there's evidence, yes. And using Ron's subsurface interface radar and uh, gold detecting equipment, he did find an area where he was getting a reading for gold, where mm. some of the people could have been buried uh, in that encampment area. Oh, so this may be, so they wore their gold, uh, and so this is a cemetery. After they, they were buried, they, they wore their gold yes, to yes. their death. So some, okay. Yes, yeah, some were buried with their gold. So again, this is a distant view. We can mm. see way out in the valley there. And just above this site, above where the baffle rock is, we can see an area in this hmm. spot. This is probably 40 feet from the Baffle Rock in this area here. This appears to have been the area of the source of the water that was coming out. And here you can see the exact hole. It appears that water was shooting out of this hole and running downhill. Um, and you can see the water here, the rocks here have been worn smooth. But uh, so, that's the Kadesh Barnea that Ron Wyatt believes is the real site of the event where, where Moses sinned. The second striking of the, the rock. The second, yes. A different location. Yes. Interesting. All yeah. right. All right. Well, we're going to get into Mount Sinai now. We have another uh, interesting presentation here, uh, Kevin. So uh, tell us about Mount Sinai. So this is a photo taken in Saudi Arabia looking back across over to Egypt. This would be a sunset photo. You can see the nice palm trees here in the foreground. 
But some people are probably asking, why are you over in Saudi Arabia? The reason we're in Saudi Arabia, as we can see on the map here, mm -hmm. is because the Red Sea crossing that we saw earlier is found at the Nueva Beach mm -hmm. in the Sinai Peninsula, and it's in the Gulf of Aqaba. And Midian is where Mount Sinai should be. Midian is in Saudi Arabia, near the mountain here, Mount Sinai. All maps that are historically accurate will show Midian over here in this area of Saudi Arabia. Midian is where Moses fled to, to escape the um, punishment of killing the Egyptian. And 40 years later, he was at the mountain of God. And because you will worship me on this mountain. Yes, he was to bring the children of Israel back to this mountain, the pillar, the fire incident with the burning bush. Mm -hmm. So he was in Midian at that point, and he was to bring the people back to that location. So we want to be looking in Saudi Arabia. So, you know what I find interesting too is even though you know Ron Wyatt and Michael Rood and others say it's here, they're not the only ones. Uh, you have on your website some other quotes from some very knowledgeable and notable people. Yes. Uh, for example, uh, Dr. Roy Knudsen, he's a professor of a professor of biblical archaeology, says the visible evidence is quite overwhelming that the location of the true Mount Sinai has been discovered in Saudi Arabia. Yes. Uh, Herschel Shanks, you mentioned uh, Herschel Shanks uh, to me when we were talking before the program. Um, he says Jabal al-Laz is most likely the site for Mount Sinai. And then Dr. Dean McKenzie, who is a professor emeritus at the University of Oregon, says the evidence points to northwest Saudi Arabia as the location of the actual Mount Sinai. Yeah, so there are, uh, quote, authorities out there that are agreeing, yes, this is the correct mountain. And this is the place where Ron, he crossed the border in 1984 on foot <laughs> from Jordan into Saudi Arabia, he and his sons, and they walked through the desert. It was a very strenuous uh, hike for them, and that's when he was uh, taken prisoner, supposedly you know, being accused of being an Israeli spy. But uh, Ron Wyatt found this mountain there, and he asked the locals, and the locals said, Jabal Musa Hena, hmm. or the mountain of Moses, is here. And so you've got a local tradition out there that, yes, this is the mountain of Moses. And, of course, they do respect uh, Moses, uh, the Muslims do. Now, there's two names there, Jabal al-Laz and Jabal Musa? The yeah, Jabal Musa Hena. They call Musa it the mountain of Moses. Okay. Yeah, is what, is what they call it. And we're talking it. about the same place. Yes, same, same place. Mountain. Same okay. as Jabal al-Laz, yes. And so here is the beach on the Saudi Arabian side of the crossing site there. Where the Israelites came over. Yep, yes. From Nueva. And that's where we saw in the previous segment where the chariot wheel was found. Ah, okay. In these, in these waters here. So this is a continuation of the crossing site. And so from the beach area, you can also see the where the column was cut down. The column that had the writing on it, uh, death, Mizraim, uh, Pharaoh, Yahweh, Solomon, hmm. water. So this was a column marking the spot for the Red Sea crossing. The authorities cut it down and took it someplace. We don't know where it is. And we, you know, what's interesting, there's two columns and people might say, oh, well, that's just each culture had their own, had their own uh, traditions of raising columns for this and that. But these are matching columns. They're the same granite. Yes, they're from opposite sides of the crossing site, strategically placed, and then you have the chariot parts in these same waters. Mm. So they were placed there on purpose, you know, for a reason. Pillars were used, you know, in ancient times to mark places or events. And so, you know, we can trust uh, these columns in this particular case. Mm. Solomon's seaport was just to the north. He knew of this area, what was going on here. So in our next slide here, we can see Tim Mahoney in the foreground, and in the background, uh, you can see the split rock, the first split oh, rock. Yes, okay. So we went from the second one back to the first one here. And of course, Tim Mahoney, he is with the website PatternsOfEvidence.com. They're putting together a documentary on this and the Red Sea Crossing. But you can see in the distance the split rock on top of a 300 foot tall hill. The split rock is 50 feet in height. It's a very prominent rock. Now in Numbers 2011, and Moses lifted up his hand with his rod, he smote the rock twice, and the water came out abundantly, and a congregation drank, 
and their beasts also. So God provided for them. He gave them provision and... Water for a million people. Uh, yes. And probably several million yes, animals. Yes, probably three, you know, three million people, yeah, plus their livestock. So some people have been able to make it over there. The country is closed. You cannot get a tourist visa. So to get into the country is very difficult. And then getting out to the site, you have to have permits usually just to get to that area. But uh, here you can see the split rock where you can see a large amount of water erosion, a large amount of water erosion coming down from the rock. In the foreground here, you can see channels being cut into the rock. The water has eroded the, the rock to a smooth surface here. And this is the rock that in modern Western times that uh, Jim and Penny Caldwell, I mean, the Bedouin have always known this is, this is here, mm -hmm. but this is where uh, ben, uh, Jim and Penny Caldwell discovered this one. Yes. After Ron discovered the mountain, Jim and Penny went out there and they also found this rock. Uh, but uh, so very, very large rock. The split in the rock is so large you can actually walk through it. Mm. You know, and a large amount of water erosion inside the rock itself. Here you can see how it stands out prominently above the peak there. And so here you can see the split in the rock where a person could walk through it. When God split it, it sure split, and then the water erosion coming up out of there, spewing up, it created more space probably in the rock, eroding it away. And you can see water erosion coming down from the rock. Yeah, and even if you saw this and you were a skeptic and said, well, that rock has always been split, or it's just a, it's a natural outcropping, and that erosion is wind erosion, well, you're not going to have wind erosion da flowing down uh, in a pattern similar to what water would create. Yes, this is definitely water erosion coming down. Again, this is a desert area, very little rainfall at all out here, and yet all this water erosion you can see on the rocks coming down from this giant split rock. So God did provide hmm. water for them lovingly, even though they were impatient and rebellious, <laughs> kind of like us, I guess. I aren't we all? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So in our next slide, you can see Ross Patterson. He's standing uh, next to the split there in the rock. Now, those who are not familiar with Ross Patterson, uh, who, who is he in relation to He's all of this? He's a friend of mine in New Zealand who okay. also promotes Ron Wyatt's work. Oh, very good. presentations, and he was able to make it out there. And so our next slide, we can see the altar Jehovah Nisi in the foreground. Mm. Um, and in the background, we can see the split rock once again standing up very prominent rock in the background. and uh, So this is an altar of some this kind This mentioned here. in the Bible, mm -hmm. yes, this altar. So again, this is matching the biblical account once again. And there's also some circular rock formations. I don't know if they held the bottoms of the tents down or something, but mm. you see some round rock formations where the children of Israel were encamped in this so that's, area. That's similar to what we find in North America with the uh, Cherokee Indians uh, and, and such across the country, that in certain areas where they would camp, they, they, there's these circles where their tents were. Okay, yeah. Uh, at teepees, different times yeah. of the year, yeah. Sure, yeah. So over on the other side of the mountain is the front of Mount Sinai, and you can see in the distance the blackened peak mm. of the mountain. Uh, once again, the Bible says that the mountain was a smoke, it was on fire, and so the mountaintop here is on, is blackened, when you, and that's extremely difficult. And you would hop, have to hop the fence now, too, to get this kind of photograph. Yes, to get inside some of these areas, you can, you can go around the fence, some of them have, but they're, of course, they're not damaging anything. Mm. You know, they're keeping everything pristine. So, and here's some more drawings, Ross is next to. This is out in the encampment area. Oh, so this is not at the altar itself. There are more of these. These are, yeah, these are a little bit away from the actual golden calf alt altar. These right here. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then this is Dr. Kim, who was out there. He went out there 12 times. He worked for the Saudi prince, and he found numerous drawings out here also. He also found these artifacts, incredible amount of mm. pottery and so forth in the encampment area. And he was a, wasn't he a personal uh, he physician was, to, the, to the king? He was to one of the princes, oh, yes. Princes. yes. Mm -hmm. And then he found, if you can see here, the arrow's pointing to a menorah. Wow. He found an inscription of a menorah where it was actually made there, Mount Sinai, the, you know, the, the golden candlestick. Mm -hmm. 
So this is where it was made, and this is the oldest image ever of the menorah or golden candlestick. He and again, he even, found if, it there. even if you were to argue that, what would a Hebrew inscription be doing in the middle of a Muslim Arab country? Exactly, yeah. This is showing the Jewish roots of these drawings out there and of the people that were there. And then Ron Wyatt found this millstone in the encampment area. Once again, mm. evidence of the people occupying, and this would have been used with manna, grinding up the manna. So this Join us again the same time, the same station next week, and we believe that the clip must have been a blessing unto you. If it has been, call us, talk to us, visit us. The speaker said you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. It is about the truth that we are out here. Tell people the truth, for them to know the truth, that they can be set free. We bless you, we thank you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for today's broadcast. Magnify yourself in the life of your people. The word that they have had, magnify it in their mind. The kingdom of glory. Establish every truth in their mind. So that they can be able to embrace the totality of your words. That your name may be praised and your name may be glorified in their life. Thank you, Father. In Yeshua's name, we are praised. of service saturday sabbath worship 10 a.m sunday scripture studies 10 a.m wednesday midweek prayer 5 p.m friday welcoming sabbath at sundown you can worship with us at there was people assembly dr solomon ademola street okyo shun shugoshu state for my inquiry you can call us on 080-631-0520 or 080-3837-6947 shalom shabbat shalom shabbat 